Hi there. I love railroads. I do. I really do. The engines, bridges, stations, even the tracks. They take us far and bring us back. Work or school, play or war, the past or the future. Our story of the birth of the railroads may surprise you. It has coal, iron, mining, and invention in it. The story also reminds me of my childhood summers spent on the side of Pennsylvania's Big Lick Mountain near the huge coal mine my grandfather worked in before it closed. Its train tracks passed near our yard. They're gone, but, and there's always a but, I could follow where they'd been, find old bridges, pick coal from the rail bed for grandma to burn in her enameled cast iron stove, maybe making apple pie if I was lucky. Cooking and keeping warm taught prehistoric humans that a fire's heat changed things like clay into long lasting pottery. Eventually, our ancestors were able to melt metal. The modern world was built on the only seven metals they knew. Gold, silver, lead, tin, mercury, iron, and copper. In 1250 AD, the eighth, a metalloid named arsenic was discovered. Weirdly, Victorian women ate this poisonous stuff mixed with vinegar and chalk to make their skin paler. Yow, yuck! Today, one of its uses is in cell phones. In a similar fashion, lead and mercury are now known to be dangerous. Did you ever hear the term, mad as a hatter? Look it up. Six of the seven original metals are soft and easily melted. Iron isn't. Copper was first cast into a shape 7,000 years ago. Three or 4,000 years later, it got mixed with tin and made the first amalgam, bronze, harder than either metal. So the Bronze Age was a huge step forward from the Stone Age. The next age had to wait a couple of thousand years till they could melt iron. Tin melts at 441 degrees Fahrenheit, iron at 2800 degrees. No one knows when coal was discovered. It's right under your feet in places. There's a lot of it, the remains of ancient swamps. It burns hotter and longer than wood. There's record of it being used in China almost 6,000 years ago. Originally, they just dug minerals and metals up. Holes turned into trenches, then dark mines. In southern Africa, there's evidence of a coal mine dug 20 to 40,000 years ago. They used torches, lamps, and even candles stuck to the hats for light. The air was full of dust and gas waiting to explode. Some tunnels were only 18 inches high, dug out by crawling. Can you imagine? Mining was and is dangerous. It's a horror to read the stories about the terrible lives of convicts, slaves, and even women and children down there. Coal miners found dinosaur bones, skulls, and lots of water flooding their tunnels, more than buckets could carry out. So animal and water-powered wheels were connected to pumps below. Later, genius found a better source of power. In 1712, an Englishman, Thomas Newcomen, invented the atmospheric steam engine. His design was used for some 50 years, though it was hugely inefficient. They just didn't know any better. The coal went to cities and factories. Where they could, boats were used. Later, canals were dug to get closer to the mines. A mule could pull 50 times more coal on a barge than it could loaded on a wagon. 
Canals also went twice as fast as wagons because rutted, unpaved roads went up and down hills and suffered from weather. Engineers did all they could to improve these wagon trails, including putting planks on the ground and using wooden rails to guide the wheels. The first railroads were born as short wood paths from the mines to nearby rivers and canals. One of the first heavily engineered wooden routes was built in 1720. It linked mines in Northeast England to docks on the River Tyne, which flows to the North Sea. The Tanfield Wagonway was five miles long. It went through hills and over streams like the Causey, which needed England's then largest stone arched bridge. It's still standing. It's amazing. One wagon passed over it every minute, each with two and a half tons of coal. Production from the area's mines kept increasing. England was running out of trees, in part because so many were being burned to make iron, an acre a day for each furnace. In 1709, on the banks of the River Severin, Abraham Darby started to use coke instead of coal. If you don't know, coke is cooked coal and it burns cleaner and hotter. This change made iron production cheaper and much more plentiful. Coal and iron were two of the drivers of the Industrial Revolution and the River Severin is its birthplace. After about, oh, 120 years, Around 1840, the wooden rails of the Tanfield Wagonway were replaced by iron ones so that the new, very heavy steam engines could pull the coal instead of mules. Tanfield may be the world's oldest railroad. I've got to admit, it astounds me to learn what a big deal coal was. The Tanfield Railroad moved the coal from just one English county, Durham. By 1923, there were some 170,000 miners working its coal field. 170,000. The last of Durham County's mines closed in 2020, an industry that had employed hundreds of thousands, if not over a million over the centuries, is gone. But, and here's another but, we still haven't talked about railroad engines birth. Didn't you notice? <laughs> Watch our next videos for them and more. I am Mike for the Be More Better team and always I learned so much making this video and I hope that's true for you watching it. Now tell us what you think about it. Subscribe if you haven't, but always, always be more better, body, mind, and spirit. I'm looking forward to seeing you the next time. Bye now. Thank you.